Oahu and examining its stomach contents, there was no sign of any plastic fragments. Thankfully, this one was safe to eat. As the days passed, we became adjusted to life on board the Sea Dragon. The living quarters were tight, and we kept busy on constantly rotating ships to keep the research going day and night. Multitasking was critical, and aside from helping with the research and sailing, everyone was expected to keep the ship running efficiently. Probably one of the most important parts of the that were still alive, even though we knew it wouldn't do much good. Some of these fish were coastal species that would struggle to survive in the harsh open ocean once we freed them. of small bits of plastic stuck in this bolus. Yeah, so, so just as one netball's caught more microfragments than we have in probably all of our trawls so far. 35 different species of marine life were living within the netball, including several types of crabs, shrimp, worms, and fish. We had stumbled upon an entire floating ecosystem. We have to understand that what we do on land has an impact. So if that little cap gets uh, washed out to sea, it will take two to three years for it to biodegrade. Microbes in the environment will eat the plastic away and it will go back to nature. It's different from regular plastic, where as you know, you know, they photodegrade, uh, so they never really go away. Bioplastics have tremendous potential. But as we sat down in front of a pile of debris collected during our voyage, we wondered, what else can be done to slow down the flow of plastic into our oceans? Can we recycle our way out of the problem? There's no way. That is, that is the biggest myth that's been, a, a, been, been put on the public. Telling people, keep consuming, but then recycle your trash. The see recycling being touted as a solution. From Lake Erie is going to flow into Lake Ontario which means you're going to get this additive effect, right? So that what we find in Lake Ontario is not just coming from the people who live around Lake Ontario, but it's also coming from the entire Great Lakes system. we got to think of this as a system. So the water from Lake Superior flows into Huron, flows into Erie, flows into Ontario, and so you have this additive effect. So now we're looking at Lake Ontario, I think that the counts are even going to be higher. Uh, from a personal standpoint, whether it's plastics or whether it's chemicals we use, or basically we're connected to the lakes, right? What we put down the drain, what we do in our household ultimately is connected to the lake, and so we have the, we have the responsibility and we have the ability to, to help in any situation.